You might see after the link that it's not exactly 10 minutes, but with the final 10 minutes of this program is dedicated and designed as if it's right before the game is going to start, that friends are together, they're going to watch the football game, they're, they're getting ready to be able to have a, a fun time. And they want to talk about the Bible first, though, because the Bible obviously trumps any sport, any game that might be on. And so right before, we have these questions that we like to ask a good friend of ours named Robert Jeffries. He is a preacher for the South Haven Church of Christ. He's been preaching there almost a good portion of seven years now. And he gets together with us. He opens up his basement to us as we sit down and we talk about the Bible. We try to talk about different questions that we might have. And he, the job that he has is, let's say we're talking about atheism. The first job that we're going to ask, the first question that is, is how do you define atheism? And then the second question will be, where in life might atheism come about? Where, where do I need to be looking to uh, avoid atheism? Or where can I find an atheist so that I can try to study with them? Uh, a third one, from time to time, this one won't be able to be used, of course, because some illustrations don't necessarily fit with what we're talking about. But what about an illustration about an atheist that you have? Is there anything that you can tell us of your experience with atheists before? And then finally, the most important, we save the best for last, what does the Bible have to say about atheists? And I'm, I'm saying the word atheist a lot because today that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about atheism. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after 10 minutes to kick off. Where'd you get it? I don't... Uh, I think my parents gave it to me. How long ago? Uh, about a year ago. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now you have uh, you have two kids, but we have one on the way, right? Yep. And so uh, that's July? Yep, July the 11th. Awesome, awesome. Wow, and do you good. know whether it's a boy or a girl yet? It's or? a boy. Okay, awesome. So you're going to have two, two boys now. Two boys and a girl. So you're going to try sure. to raise them up to uh, to play sports, right? Oh, we're going to try to. That's do our best. That's <laughs> right. We've got to train them right. Uh, yes, so sir. if you had to choose any position, what would you want them to play? Oh, up? I would, uh, of course, I, I've got a basketball background, mm -hmm. and so I'd, mm -hmm. I'd I can imagine to, uh, <laughs> to be involved in basketball. But mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to see the boys play football if they wanted to, and, yeah. and things right. along that line. Our little girl, she plays uh, plays t ball right now, and so she mm -hmm. uh, some days are good, some days are bad. Some days right. she she likes it, and other days she can care less. And so yeah. plays a little bit of soccer too. So. Yeah, I remember being that age playing t ball and uh, played with the scriptures. You know, Jake mm -hmm. and Vern was the coach, and so right. we played, and we never won a game I think but one and so uh, we actually we had a lot of fun with that but I do understand that when you're a little kid you, you feel like you're being forced to play on some right. of the games uh -huh. then sometimes you enjoy it sometimes they're, so, they're more interested in playing with the dirt and, mm -hmm. and running around doing that than <laughs> the ball games so. right. yeah. yeah and did you you played sports or? yeah I played basketball growing up I played all throughout school so right. now I kind of coach a little bit my, my little brother actually plays now okay. so I'm able to coach him a little bit and uh, give him some pointers uh, you know, yeah. so but maybe I'll be able to come over again and help out your kids. Sounds, sounds good. Yes, sounds sir. good. Yeah, buddy. Well, before the game starts, um, I'm looking forward to watching the game and looking forward to getting okay. to see it. But before it starts, uh, there have been some th some things that have kind of popped up. And I want to ask you a question. And uh, we may have other questions that come about from this question. But the first question I have is... Atheism is something that has begun to be a little bit more and more popular over the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, for someone like me, I, I know a little bit about atheism, but for those that may not know, I, I want to know how to help them see what it is. So, so my first question for you is, how would you define the word atheism? You know, Michael, that's a, that's a really good question. And that's a question that deserves to be answered because there may be some people that are in the dark as far as to knowing exactly what this is. It's a word that, you know, is being tossed around a lot in our world today. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's extremely important that we have an understanding of it. When we think about the atheism, uh, atheism is basically a system of belief that denies the existence of God. And so when you place it on an individual level and you call somebody or, or somebody refers to themselves as an atheist, we're talking about an individual. 
who believes that there is no God. Now that's not to get that confused with somebody who is an agnostic. That's another okay. word that, that, uh, that's popular uh, out there today. That, that basically means that we can't really know uh, if, if God exists or not. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but, but an atheist is somebody who believes that there is no God. And uh, I think it's very important when we talk about atheism, we're talking about a system of belief. Mm-hmm. And so this is, these are people that, that have faith in a system, but it's faith in a system that denies the existence of God. So with those types of people, that were they grown up, were some of them growing up and they just kind of come to that conclusion? Uh, there, there's a good good possibility. There's, uh, there's also uh, different uh, uh, points in life where a person may be taught this. Uh, specifically, you know, for a young person, uh, they may hear this at school. Uh, this may be something that, that they may be taught, uh, especially in, in our, our public school systems today. Now, I do want to say this. Uh, I do want to say that we need to be careful making a blanket statement by saying that every single public school teacher teaches this, that every right. single public school system uh, believes in this. I think we get ourselves in trouble at times when we make that blanket statement and, uh, and things along that line. Because, you know, here in DeSoto County, where GBN's headquarters are, uh, this particular county, there are a lot of teachers that teach against atheism. There are a lot of teachers that have a firm belief in God. Uh, there are a number of teachers that uh, that do their best to try to steer their classroom away from that um, uh, philosophy, away from that thought process. But uh, a lot of times that's the exception to the rule. And uh, you, you've got a lot of places today where this is something that's being forced down our young people's throat, that, that God does not exist. And if you believe that God exists, they're going to belittle you. Uh, they're going to uh, treat you as somebody who's ignorant. They're going to treat you as somebody who has a little education. You know, you're not somebody that's, that's uh, very intelligent if you believe uh, that God was the creator of the world. And if you believe in him and uh, believe that he's going to reward you when this life comes to an end, uh, then you're somebody who's who's uh, uh, not as intelligent as other individuals are. Now, uh, even more so, moving from the middle school and high school level, uh, you get to the college level, especially at some of our public and, and state schools that are out there today. If you haven't heard it on the high school and middle school level, uh, you're definitely probably going to hear it on the college level. Right. And, uh, and these college professors, uh, they are well-versed in this this is their specialty and uh, and they're going to be doing their best to continue to plant seeds in their students minds and a lot of times they'll even challenge their students uh, and and really try to embarrass them if they want to stand up for their belief in God right now that we know what atheism is where in life may we uh, encounter atheism you know Atheism seems to be the fastest growing religion in the entire world. Uh, when you think about you know, 40, 50, 60 years ago, especially in our country, there used to be a lot of debates that would take place. And most of the debates would take place uh, between gospel preachers and denominational preachers. And they would be debating on specific things relating to doctrine uh, in regards to the scriptures. Um, but that's not the case anymore. You don't see those debates from that uh, mindset okay. uh, quite as much. And I think the, the, one of the biggest reasons why we don't see that is, uh, is number one, one, we've got a lot of people that, that have this idea today that they really don't care. You know, it doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter what I believe. We're all going yeah. to the same place. Uh, we've got individuals that have the idea, you're okay, I'm okay. Uh, we've got individuals that don't know what they believe. 40, 50, 60 years ago, people knew what they believed, and they were ready to talk to other people about that. Today, we've got people that, that have absolutely no clue what it is that they believe. Some people don't even have uh, a belief system that they hold to. And so one of the easiest things for, for them to run and find comfort in is just say, you know, there's no God. Mm-hmm. And uh, we really don't know that he exists. And so atheism has really uh, gotten on this fast track. And, and you've got people falling for it hook, line, and sinker. 
and uh, people just following it in, in droves. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons now why you do see debates along this line. You know, we've seen uh, Kyle Butt from Apologetics Press yeah, right. do a lot of debating on this particular subject. And uh, the, it's vitally important because it's needed uh, in, in our world today. But you see how things have transitioned in our world from 40, 50, 60 years ago where you had gospel preachers and denominational preachers debating doctrine and today that's not the case because atheism is the fastest growing religion in the world and so this is something we're having to combat with every resource that we've got uh, possible but uh, you know I think it's very important that we always let God speak to us, mm-hmm. that we always try to figure out what God has to say uh, along these lines. Mm-hmm. And with that, you know, they're right about one thing that they say, if we do all believe that I'm okay, you're okay, we will all go to the same place, but it won't be the place that they think we're going <laughs> right. to. That's exactly and right. I think that's what's so scary about it is they think, oh, we'll just all go to heaven. No, we will all go to the same place if we take that mindset, but we'll sadly be mistaken when we, uh, that's very true. we wake up in eternity, as they say. But mm-hmm. that brings me to a question. You know, the m- movies recently here that have hit the box office of God's not dead, heaven is for real, things, that movies that are trying to, to tug at the heartstrings, so to speak, of trying to prove that there is an existence of that. Now, be, being honest, not all of them have, have got scripturally accurate right. things, but it's at least kind of a good mm-hmm. thing to see that people are still trying to get out the truth as far as that there is a heaven, right. God is not dead. Mm-hmm. But with those types yeah. of things, what, ty- what where in life might I have a, a, a piece, an a uh, piece of information of like a, a story that may be able to help me combat an atheist, maybe a story that you may have felt or, or, or dealt with. Uh, do you have anything like that of an illustration I could use? You know, when when uh, when we think of, uh, of, of illustrations in regards to, uh, uh, to atheism, to me, uh, eh, to me, the best place to find the standard is going to be the Word of God. Mm. And, uh, you know, you've got individuals that, that deny God's existence. When we look at Romans chapter 1 in verse 20, uh, Paul is, is going to be writing to these individuals, and he's going to be talking to them about just, you know, l- look around at the things that you're able to see. Uh-huh. And he said, if, if you will just look at things like the sun and, and the moon and the stars, uh, you're going to be able to see, hey, somebody designed that. You look at Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 4, and the Hebrews writer is going to talk about that, uh, that everything's got a maker. Uh-huh. You know, you think about the building that we're sitting in today. Uh-huh. You look at that and you can understand, hey, somebody had to build that. That didn't just right. automatically appear one day. Somebody had to to lay out the blueprints for that. You had to have a contractor that, that uh, arranged everything. You had to have different individuals come in and, and uh, pour the concrete. You had to come people, people come in here, uh, lay the foundation, put up the walls and things along that line. He also goes on to say in Hebrews 3 and verse 4, that not only when you see that, that everything has a maker, but he takes everything back to the beginning and he says, hey, God's the one that made it all. Uh-huh. And so with everything that you see, it's got a maker. Uh-huh. And uh, somebody made everything. And the intelligent designer made it all, and that's God. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I have a few friends that are atheists. And uh, it's, it's very hard to talk to them because, like we said, they don't believe in the Bible. Mm-hmm. So are there any Bible verses that we can go to to try to, you know, initiate that study with them? Uh, absolutely. You know, in, in Psalm 14 and verse 1, and I, and I would be careful uh, of coming right out and, and using this verse immediately, but keep it in the, in the back of your mind. But Psalm okay. 14 and verse 1 tells us that the fool has said in his own heart, there is no God. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's very important that we understand what the word fool means there in that context. The, the word fool is, is, is a description of an individual who has been presented with logical evidence and denies that evidence. And so in essence, the psalmist is saying that individual is foolish for not believing the evidence that's been presented. You know, we mentioned just a few moments ago, Romans chapter one and verse 20, uh, that that's part of the evidence, things that we're able to look out and see. Hebrews three and verse four, we're able to see uh, those things. But I'd like for us to to think about another passage. And this one comes from Isaiah chapter 40 in verse 22. And uh, this particular passage 
passage is is going to deal with a a thought that uh, uh, that contradicted a lot of thought, you know, uh, three, four, five, six hundred years ago. For a long time, man believed that uh, that the Earth was flat. Mm. Didn't believe right. that it was round. Long before we had rockets and spaceships that were able to orbit the Earth. There was a prophet by the name of Isaiah that was inspired to write the following words concerning how the earth was round, the circle of the earth. Now, how did he know that information? You know where he got that information? It had to be God. He got that information yeah. from God. All right. L long before we had this, this scientific research, you know, you think about something else, Psalm chapter 8 and verse 8. The psalmist is going to talk about the paths of the sea and, and how the ships are able to navigate through those paths. Do you know that ships still use those today? Even with all of the equipment that they have, they still use those lanes to be able to find their way uh, through the sea. But I, I want to give you another one. And, and this one's going to come from Leviticus chapter 17. Uh, this one here has to deal with, uh, with science and with medicine. You know, we have sick people living uh -huh. today. We have diseases uh, that, are, that are running rampant in various places of the world. Uh, and when you look at Leviticus 17, especially verses 2 through 4, God is going to give some means by which to control disease. Mm -hmm. And he's going to talk about the means of quarantine. You know, we quarantine people today uh, right. when we're trying to control disease. Uh, something else that takes place in this passage, you see individuals wearing a mask. Have you ever wondered why a surgeon wears a mask when he goes into surgery? Mm -hmm. He's trying to control uh, disease. He's trying to control the spreading of germs. Mm -hmm. Do you know long before a germ was was detected and a germ was discovered by a scientist, God was already, already talking about germs in the scriptures. Hmm. Uh, Moses was talking about those things. You have later on in Leviticus 17 where uh, you've got people yelling unclean, unclean, mm -hmm. because they're trying to stop the control, the, the, the spreading mm -hmm. of germs. And so long before a germ was ever discovered, Moses knew about germs. Mm -hmm. Moses knew about cleanliness. He knew about sanitation. Mm -hmm. You know where he got that information from? Yeah. He got that yeah. information from God. Mm -hmm. And so we see this over and over and over again. Same thing in Leviticus 17 with, uh, with blood. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for years in our country, medicine uh, practices was bloodletting. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually they figured out, hey, life is in the blood. Mm -hmm. Long before this. Moses said life was in the blood. He got that information from God. That's so interesting to think about with that, you know, the iPhones, people will say that that's made, but they won't say man was made or the earth was made. That blows my right. mind. But, right. but that, that's great. That answers all of our questions. We're, we're, great. we're grateful that we know someone like you who can help us and think about the Bible and that we can find the answer in Scripture. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, we hey, appreciate guys. It. hey, guys, guess what? What? It's game time. Awesome. Yes, Looking sir. forward to it. you'll benefit from 10 minutes to kick off, not necessarily because of anything Gerald Jordan and I have to say, as you'll see Jordan on the program as well, but Robert has an extensive amount of knowledge, and it's a great thing to have at his disposal, especially for us as young people trying to grow and trying to sub attain that knowledge and asking these types of questions so that we can learn about these difficult subjects. And of course, from time to time, you've seen Gerald and Jordan on another program, the program of Pew Packers. And so finally, I know you might have been waiting and waiting and it's been so long since they've been able to be here but we put them to work while they were here and we got a lot of pew packers for you while they've been here and so we're going to have some pew packers on today we're going to have another pew packer where they're going to break down a song for those of you who don't know what pew packers is gerald and jordan pew p-u-g-h they get together and they talk about different songs from our song books or a youth song book maybe a camp song book and they'll say they'll take a song and they'll break it down and try to help us understand what the meaning of it is it's a great benefit fit to have because the Bible talks about sing with the Spirit and sing with an understanding. Truly, these songs can teach you and I. There are definitely things that we can learn from singing different songs such as, you know, a little kid song like Jesus Loves Me. Another song maybe like Pierce My Ear, which talks about serving God and God alone. Being an important servant in God's church and trying to do everything we can in our life to serve Him. So let's get ready for another Pew Packers lesson right now. We'll be back to close out the program 
after this. We'd like to thank you for joining us for Pew Packers today. And today we're going to examine the song, Oh How He Loves You and Me. This is, again, another song that a lot of youth love to sing because of the harmonies and how it sounds when all of the young people get together. Uh, this song is based off John chapter 15 and verse 9 uh, when Jesus was telling his disciples about the love that the Father had for him and how the love that Jesus had for his disciples and what he, the love he has for us. Right. And, you know, Jesus had agape love, and that means it's a sacrificial love. And that's what he did. He died on the cross for us, you know, according to John chapter 3 and verse 16. And he said, for us, he wants us to continue in his love. And so he wants us to have the same kind of agape love that he had for the entire world. And, you know, we have the obligation as New Testament Christians today uh, to have an agape love for one another. And let's go on and examine what verse number one says. Okay. It says, oh, how he loves you and me. He who gave his life, what more could he give? Oh, how he loves you and me. You know, this verse expresses the love and compassion that not only the Father, but Jesus Christ himself had for the world. You know, the Bible says Jesus Christ had compassion on a lot of people, you know, but he had compassion on the entire world, and that's why he came down to die on the cross for us. You know, and the second part is really interesting. It asks a question. It says, what more could he give? You know, his sacrifice on the cross is the best gift that has ever been given and ever will be given. Right. You know, and the song reiterates over and over and time and time again the measure of the Father's love through the Son. And, you know, a lot of people ask the question, well, how can we show our gratitude? There's no way that we can, you know, please God for what he sent Jesus Christ to do. But there's something that we can do uh, to be pleasing to him. You know, if you look at John chapter 14 and verse 15, you know, Jesus said, if you love me, uh, keep my keep commandments. My commandments. <laughs> and so if we love Jesus Christ and the Father and what he did for us, simply all we have to do is keep his commands, which is a great, great thing for us to do as servants of his. Right. And by obeying Christ and obeying the Father and His Word, you know, we can be His friends and uh, give Him the love just as He gave it back to us. Right. The next verse says, Jesus to Calvary did go, His love for mankind to show. What He did there brought hope from despair. Oh, how He loves you and me. Jesus dying on the cross, like in the first verse, right. what more could He do? That's the ultimate sacrifice. You know, the Bible says, you know, if you love someone, you're going to lay down your life for, for the your brethren. Yep. So that just shows you how much Christ loved us. You know, he loved, you know, his, his, you can't really even fathom how much right. he loved us. God sent his only son down on this earth to die for us. Mm -hmm. And we were just sinners. And, you know, the, the things that we do today... You know, we should have no problem, you know, wanting to go to service. We right. should now have no problem evangelizing. All the things that Christ did for us, it's just, you know, so many things that we, we need to do to show our love to Christ. Many times, you know, we walk into to, to service and, you know, you see people and they, they look like they don't want to be there. You know, right. they have a bad attitude. But that should, that should be the total opposite for, for Christians because right. Christ died for us. We're in Christ, so we need to have that same love that Christ had for us and go out and get other people so they can mm -hmm. experience that love. Right, and it was, you know, I hear a lot of preachers say that Christians should be some of the most, most joyous people in, right. the in the world. Not necessarily, you know, the feeling, but just that just that gratitude that Jesus Christ came down to die for you and you've been baptized into his blood and you know that you can be saved. And that's something that a lot of Christians need to uh, understand and to get uh, you know, through their minds that it's not about them, it's about Jesus Christ and serving Him and giving Him uh, what He gave to us. Yeah, everything is about Christ. And right. It also says we have the peace that passes all, all understanding. understanding. So once you have that peace about you, you know, you can just go out and evangelize, you can go out and work because, you know, you have this peace that surpasses all understanding and then you want to that makes you want to go out and tell other people about it. It's right. Just, just so we can make this world a better place, fill it up with Christians. Right. So just summing it all up, looking at this song, we can see that God had great, great love for us. And even through his son and the Holy Spirit, just the Godhead in general had a great love for the entire world. They planned it all the way from Genesis to Revelation, even from the beginning of time. They planned uh, how we can be redeemed uh, back from sin. 
You know, and there's no other way, there was no other way to do it except for to send Jesus Christ to die for us on the cross. You know, God was willing to give everything that he had for us, but are we willing to give ourselves for him? Mm. You know, it's said that we're supposed to be able to deny ourselves and follow him. Are we willing to give up what we want and all the things that we want to do yeah. and give it to Christ? Also, we can take it a step further. Not only, if, like you said, we're supposed to, you know, want to do everything for Christ, but now we should be able to give that same love to our brethren. Right. The people that are surrounded with us, you know, the people that we, we go to service with, our, our spiritual brothers in Christ. Christ loved us so much, mm -hmm. so in turn, we're supposed to love him, but also love our, our Christian brothers and sisters. Right, and I think just at, just this whole song, the whole message is to always reiterate and to remember, oh, how he loves you and me. Yes. You know, we'd like to thank you for joining us today to learn about, uh, oh, how he loves you and me. Uh, it's a beautiful song. It's a great song to sing, and the message is so strong, and it's something that all Christians really, really need to understand. And remember, the next time you sing this song, no matter where you are, uh, no matter who you're singing it with, remember to always sing with the Spirit and always sing with understanding. Thank you so much for being with us today. We're grateful that you took time out of your schedule to sit down and be with us here on Text Message. We greatly appreciate the opportunity that we have to be on GBN to try to help those in the world that, that might need encouraging. Hopefully something we've said today has encouraged you. Hopefully the new program that we have now, 10 Minutes to Kick Off, will be a program that you enjoy, a program that will help benefit in your life, especially those sports fans out there. I'm sure that you enjoyed watching a program talking about certain things sports related. As we close out the program today, don't forget that the number that you've seen on your screen all program is the number for text message. You can text us with a thought, a question, uh, maybe a concern that you have, maybe something that you need help with. You never have to give us your name. You never have to give us any information about you at all that you're not comfortable giving. Just tell us what you're dealing with, and we'll do our absolute best here to help you. Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm Michael Clark, and we'll see you next time on Text Message. Open controls. There is Timer, but flash, select, living room, Apple TV, selected.